Hey everybody, Day really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki, Demon of the Fleeting Blossom. And we're starting our first route with the game. We're going to start out with Sonosuke because he has the happiest story in here. And there's a lot of really depressing stuff in this game, so yeah, let's start out on a good note. So choices from here out will be reflective of his route. And again, remember, this is my second amateur channel, so if you want to hear better readings without me stumbling around with the words, you can go there. Uh, link is in the description. There are different games, though, of course. Alright, so anyway, for my first choice as to what to do next, I must attempt to explain my situation. I would tell them the truth. Perhaps if I did, they'd understand my predicament. Perhaps they think I'm from Kyoto as well. If I told them I'd only just arrived in Kyoto, they might lower their guard, or so I hoped. If I didn't know anyone in Kyoto, and I'd only come to look for my father, I haven't told them I'm a girl. The rest perhaps could wait, but I felt that it might be wise to at least tell them I was a girl. I took a deep breath, and then shouted as loud as I could, Excuse me! Is anyone there? Silence. After a few moments, the door slid open, and several faces appeared around the edges. Well, you got some balls, I'll give you that. Actually, I don't. We've got you locked up, but that doesn't stop you yelling for us. He looked a little impressed. Oh, why can't I date you some chimpachi? I want to! Why are you one of the undateables? Alright, you called us. Here we are. Have you made up your mind about dying? Well, he was right. I had called him over. I took a deep breath and spoke. I want you to hear me out. It is unlikely that we can sympathize with your situation. So long as you understand that, say as you wish. Oh, come on, you already sympathize with my situation. It's just that it's not going to influence anything. Huh? <laughs> Saito's cold words were like a blow to my chest. The courage I'd built up rapidly began to ebb. I sympathize with your awful luck. May you rest in peace. Oh, thank you so much for your compassion. I mentioned no one to accept his fate. Uh, they all spoke as if they'd already consigned me to death. It was time to make my choice. I gave up. Oh, I guess Harada really likes uh, someone that like, needs to be protected. I tucked my legs under me and sat up as straight and dignified as I could manage. You have anything to say before you die? You said earlier you wanted us to hear you out. Forget it. He didn't look as though that was the answer he expected. Earlier, he told me that I should just accept my death and try to rest in peace. His mind was already made up. What chance did I really have? He's so pretty, too. I think he's actually the prettiest one in here besides Yuji Kata. Just get this over with. I didn't want to die, but... If I told them I was really a girl, then they'd most likely certainly ask why I'd been dressed as a man. There wasn't any way I could explain that without mentioning my father. Then why not mention your father? What's the big deal? If I happen to see something I shouldn't, then I could get my father and Dr. Masumoto in trouble. That thought kept my mouth shut. Oh, I like those eyes. Looks like you've made up your mind. Oh, I guess the... the blossoms meant that I made a good decision in his favor? He smiled and laid his hand on the sword at his hip. Hold on, Sano. We haven't decided what we're going to do yet. Yeah, it'll jump the gun. Saito's voice stopped him, as surely as if he'd put his hand on the other man's arm. Harada looked over at Saito for a moment, as his mouth quirked into a small smile. Damn. True, true. Besides, it seems like a waste. Not every day you run across a girl with balls like this one. He noticed! Huh? My eyes went wide. W what H How did you know? Harada opened his mouth to reply, but Nagakura didn't didn't let him. Wait a minute there, Sano. Did you just say girl? Well, I was just trying to get a rise out of him, uh, her. But I guess I hit on something, huh? I mean, come on. Didn't you think the kid was a little girly? Nagakura, <laughs> Nagakura seemed more distraught than I'd expected. He looked as though he was about to say something, but... Toto patted him on the shoulder and glanced at me. All right then, how about you tell us why you decided to dress up like a man? 
Can I? Am I going to? There I was, surrounded once again by the leaders of the Shinsengumi. In fact, I did think you were rather pretty, but to think you were in fact a lady all this time. Kondo was nodding his head solemnly over and over, as if he were agreeing with a very intelligent suggestion. Once you know she's a girl, she really doesn't look like a boy at all, does she? Something about that seemed to impress Toto. Then we bound a girl and left her for an entire night. Oh dear. He looked at me, his eyes concerned. Each of them took the news differently. Well, she claims to be a girl, but it's not like we have any actual proof, right? Oh, come on! Do you really need to look... P proof Harada laughed. Nagakuro grumbled to himself under his breath. Proof? Really? Not obvious enough for you, huh? Alright, will you feel better if I strip her down? Please don't! No! You absolutely will not! Even suggesting such a thing is preposterous! Kondo shot up before I even finished, his face bright red, but Harada's words hadn't had any mouse behind them. Well, I just figured it was the quickest way to settle the question. He shrugged and settled back into his seat. Nagakuro crossed his arms, and his brows were knit. Well, if you really are a girl then, killing just feels kind of... wrong. It doesn't matter. If we have to kill her, she dies. Hijikata's words left no room for argument. Gender is irrelevant. Killing in general is wrong. We were organized to protect the public good of the city for, of Kyoto. We would ill serve the public good by murdering civilians in cold blood. Yeah, yeah. But if this girl or boy is a threat to the peace, that's a horse of a different color. He had that grin again. The Shinsengumi didn't enjoy a shining reputation already. If rumors began to spread that their men were thirsty for blood, things weren't likely going to go well for them. They wouldn't be able to operate in Kyoto, and with no one to protect the people, the city would eventually fall into chaos. I could see in their eyes that each and every one of them knew full well the consequences rash actions would have. Well then, we need only determine if you are a threat. Will you tell us your side of the story? I could feel all their eyes on me. The room went quiet. My name is Chizuru Yukimura. I told them everything, how I lived in Edo, how I'd come to Kyoto to find my father. Oh, then you're from Edo as well, and you came all the way to Kyoto to find your father. I could see emotion welling up in his eyes. What business does your father have in Kyoto? My father is a doctor. His name is Koro Yukimura, and he specializes in Western medicine. What? Huh? They know him! The moment my, father, my father's name crossed my lips, the atmosphere in the room changed. Oh my! So the good Dr. Koro has a daughter. You know my father? I wasn't sure what the sudden silence meant, only that the revelation of my parentage had caused a pronounced change in their behavior. It was Saito who finally broke the silence. The Shinsengumi is currently attempting to determine the whereabouts of Dr. Kodo Yukimura. You're after my father? Why? Oh no, you've got us all wrong. We're not, uh, after him. Oh, I see. Tension that I hadn't noticed appear began to dissipate. He's a supporter to the Shogun, but... Well, he kind of disappeared a little while ago. There is a reasonable chance that the enemies of the Shogun have identified him as a threat. Ugh! My eyes went wide, but Saito kept talking as if I'd done nothing. There is also a chance, of course, that he's still alive. Doctors trained in Western medicine are valuable and rare. I wasn't sure what else to do, so I nodded. My heart pounded in my chest, threatening to burst out onto the floor. Father, was he safe? But with you, we have a much better chance of finding the good doctor. Huh? Sanan continued. Apparently my father had only visited a small number of times. I understood what he meant. It would be difficult for them to track down someone they barely knew. 
You are his daughter, however. You ought to be able to recognize him, no matter how he may have disguised himself, yes? Yes, I could. I nodded as I spoke, and gave him what I hoped was a steady, reassuring smile. Well, if she is his daughter, we can't really kill her, can we? Which means more work for me, his eyes added. They narrowed as he looked down at me. If you swear you'll forget about what you saw last night, then we'll look after you until you can find your father. Fair? I promise that the Shinsengumi will do whatever we can to help you find Dr. Kodo. Th thank you so much! I never imagined something like this. Not only had I survived, I'd found my first decent lead. You must be pretty glad we won't be killing you, huh? Well, we won't be killing you just now at any rate. He gave me that same wolfish grin. There was no denying that my situation was still less than desirable, but at that moment I didn't care. Yes, I'm very glad. I'd been through a lot, but at least I found help, and where I'd never expected it, the Shinsengumi. Kyoto hadn't been kind to me, even though I'd been there less than a day, but it looked as though my fortunes were taking a turn for the better. I still had a long way to go, and I had worries aplenty, but it was important to stay optimistic. I prefer to place you in the custody of the Judiciary Commissioner, or the Aizu, rather than keep you in a house full of men, but... Kondo let the sentence hang in the air and looked at me, his arms folded. It was clear I had no choice but to stay with the Shinsengumi. Should you require anything, you need only ask. We will do what we can to accommodate you. Oh. His expression didn't change, but his words were unexpectedly warm. I looked away from him awkwardly, but I still felt the heat rise in my cheeks. Thank you. W well, uh, I guess we'll have to be nicer to you now that we know you're a girl. That's sexist. You're always nice to the lady, Shin. Sure didn't take long for you to change your tune when you found out she was a girl, though, huh? Oh, whatever. Having a lady here at headquarters is sure gonna brighten things up, huh? Um... I wasn't entirely sure that would be the outcome. Still, we can hardly treat her as one of our soldiers. Something else must be done with her. Then, we make her a page or something. You want an assistant, Kondo? How about you, Sanan? He gave a small shrug. Whatever was done with me, it seemed he no longer cared. No, care about me, Hijikata. I love you. You're so beautiful. Oh, come on, Hijikata. It was your idea. You can't just pawn her off on someone else. Uh, he could if he wanted to. Ah, excellent. I believe we can trust Toshi with her. Kondo's face split in a wide smile, and he slapped his leg in agreement. <laughs> well, there you have it, Hijikata. I hope you'll take good care of her. Sanan's smile had more than a little mocking twist to it. Uh... You sons of bitches! Um... As I watched their back and forth, some of my earlier relief began to ebb away. What was going to happen to me? Well, at least you're not gonna die! February 1864 I slid the door open, and a breath of cool morning air met me. Clunts of thick clouds trundled silently over the city, an unusually strong wind driving them along. It's cold today. I shivered a bit and grabbed a jacket from near the door to wrap around myself. A week had passed since I'd begun living in the headquarters of the Shinsengumi. They allowed me to roam around the compound as I pleased, and I was given ro a room of my own. They weren't the best accommodations, but given that they nearly murdered me instead, I thought it best not to complain. Yeah, I'm grateful. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Still... I looked down at my feet on the cold floor and sighed. Do I really need to dress like this all the time? Did I bring other clothes with me? They'd given me a place to live for the time being, but it hadn't been without conditions. The Shinsengumi will look after you, but we can't have a woman running around our headquarters. As he explained, if rumors were spread that, sh that the Shinsengumi were keeping a woman, woman in their compound, tongues would begin to wag. It might even bring people who were after my father to, this, to the Shinsengumi in search of me. Why would anybody be searching for me? 
Of course, they hadn't been able to determine whether or not we'd even been attacked. There were a great many questions left unanswered. We could ill afford any reckless decisions. Or so Heijikata had told me. In other words, we need you to keep pretending to be a man. I doubt that's what you wanted to hear, but you do it or you're out on your ass. Clear? Yes. His reasoning was sound. But perhaps more than that, I knew he was looking out for not only the Shinsengumi, but also for the safety of my father and myself. I didn't have a choice, of course, but knowing that made following his orders at least somewhat more palatable. I doubt that you would do so intentionally, but the presence of a woman could, uh, disrupt morale, so to speak. His tone suggested he was joking, but it was clear that he was telling the truth as well. For that reason, only we, the Shinsengumi leadership, will know the truth of your situation. That's a good idea. If word were to get out, there was no telling how fast rumors could spread, or where to. I had to stay a boy. All right then, what should I do while I'm here? Nothing. You're going to get a room, and you're going to stay in it. Ah, oh, it's really boring. How am I going to search for my father that way? Really? Oh, I could have sworn we decided she was going to be someone's page. <sighs> Hijikata turned toward Okita, and his eyes narrowed. Soji, keep your tongue in your mouth, or I'll cut the thing off. Before long, I'd been there for a week. I guess I don't have much of a choice. I prefer otherwise, of course, but I'll do what I have to. I wasn't quite sure what to make of it yet, but since I'd been dressing like a boy, I'd grown rather used to the feel of wearing pants and of having the kodachi my father had given me always at my hip. He'd presented me with it when I was only a child and impressed upon me at least some sense of importance. Supposedly, it had been in the Yukimoto family for generations. As such, I was forced to take lessons in swordplay, so I knew which end was meant for the enemy, but... I had never much cared for weapons. So am I really a descendant of Yukimura, Sanada Yukimura, and the others? They hurt people, of course, but it was more than that, at least for me. For as far back as I could remember, any wounds I suffered healed at an incredible rate. Small cuts would disappear overnight. As a child, I thought nothing of it, but as I grew older, I began to realize that I wasn't quite normal. When I asked my father, he told me that, if a gift for, that it was a gift from the gods, but that I should tell no one of it. I didn't tell anyone, of course. I was afraid that they would treat me like a monster if they did. Ever since then, I'd done my best not to get hurt. I stayed as far away from blades as I could, and before I realized it, I was rather afraid of them. Dressing as a man all the time was frustrating, as was carrying a sword, but it was my condition that worried me the most. What is my condition? Still, that wasn't the only thing on my mind. The rank-and-file soldiers have been treating me coldly. I'm not just imagining it, right? I'd heard having a private room was a rare privilege, even for the captains. For a child to appear out of nowhere and be given better treatment than their own captains, it was little wonder that the soldiers resented me. True, I suppose I can't really blame them. Also, quite simply, I felt bad. I was enjoying the hospitality, such as it was, of the Shinsengumi, and so I felt I should help them in some way, but I knew nothing of soldiers and their ways. There wasn't much opportunity for me to learn either. Hijikata had instructed me to leave my room as little as possible. From time to time, the captains or other officers would send me on an errand or another, but I was nothing approaching a page. Most of the duties they gave me were things more suited for a maid than a soldier, and it made the rest of the men even more resentful for what appeared to be special treatment. They're just watching me. To make sure I kept my mouth shut, they took turns keeping watch over me. My mistakes could mean serious trouble for them, so they were doing their best to keep me away from the other soldiers. Hmm. Then again, perhaps I was just a poor actor. Their soldiers almost never spoke to me, but when they did, it was difficult for me to act manly. All too often, the captains had to step over to cover for me. Alright, if I'm just sitting here in this room all the time, how am I going to find my father? And how, are I, how am I supposed to help them find my father? Each time they did, it made me look as though I couldn't even manage to speak for myself. I felt even worse. If I'm really going to stay here, I'd like to be friends with at least some of them. But I can't exactly tell them the truth, can I? Indeed, I couldn't. 
and so I had no choice but to stay out of the way and keep to myself. It wasn't a pleasant existence, and I was beginning to feel depressed. If I'm supposed to stay out of the way, then I shouldn't be leaving my room, but... I very much wanted to go look for my father. However, even after a week had passed, I was still not allowed to leave the headquarters. I'd come to Kyoto in, in search of my father, but for the time being, it seemed that search had been stopped in its tracks. Hmm. Perhaps, I thought, I could talk to Hijikata, if he would give me permission to look for my father. Oh no, that's right. Hijikata had left on a trip to Osaka several days before. Huh. Perhaps I can sneak out while he's not here. Hmm. I wasn't sure what to do. I shall search the compound. As I thought about it, I realized that I had no idea how the, how the Shinsengumi compound was laid out. If I were to live here, I thought then I ought to make an effort to learn. Yeah, you don't want to get lost if you're trying to escape or something at some point. I took a deep breath and gathered my courage and stepped out of the room. There's no one here. I looked around. The hall was utterly empty. Then again, I realized since I snuck out of my room, it was probably for the best that no one had seen me. Still, I felt a little guilty about it. Perhaps I should have stayed in my room. Am I going to get in trouble? If I wandered around the compound, there was a good chance I'd see something I wasn't supposed to. And my life would be in danger again. I'd already stumbled onto one of the Sh Shinsengumi secrets the night I met them. I had no wish to do so again. I suppose it's better to know than be ignorant, but... I'd promised to forget what I'd seen that night. What should I do? I already decided and left the room. After some deliberation, I decided it was best to return to my room, but as I turned to walk back... Huh? From somewhere near the entrance, I heard... something. Who is it? Is it my beloved Harada for this route? Slowly, I looked around the corner. Walking toward the door, looking as if they would really prefer not to be seen, were Harada and Nagakura. Oh! What? Can I come with you? Maybe if they let me go outside, I could finally start searching for my father. Well, I don't really care, but I don't think you're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, hey, no you idiot, we can't take her. And you don't have the authority to, to give her permission to leave anyway. He poked Harada in the chest as he spoke, but there was something almost nervous in his manner. Is he one of those guys who's nervous around girls? Huh? Oh, right. We aren't supposed to let you out of the house, huh? They don't even let you out of your room without an escort. Um... Well, um... Where are you going anyway? No, no changing the subject. Ah, well, whatever. We're on our way to Shimbara, if you really want to know. Shimbara? The name was familiar. Wait, that's the red light district, isn't it? Nagakura looked back and forth between us and sighed. Come on, what are you doing telling a girl the truth about us going to Shimbara? <laughs> you know me, I can't lie. Besides, it's not like we're going to do anything bad. Well, it is the red light district, it sounds bad. Not you, maybe. You're just coming alone to drink. Nagakura, are you going for something other than the alcohol? Uh, the girls? He made a face I couldn't interpret and looked away. <laughs> True, there were probably a lot of beautiful women in Shimbara. Someone like Harada who just went to drink was probably pretty rare. But you're going in the afternoon? Isn't that every man's dream? Harada didn't seem terribly concerned about the appearance of impropriety. Well, even so, I hardly think it's good to be drinking in the afternoon. Even if it was every man's dream, I still couldn't bring myself to condone it. Two of their captains drinking in the middle of the afternoon would hardly help the already low public opinion of the Shinsengumi. Then again, it's not like it was really my business to care about how people thought of the Shinsengumi. Yeah, I see your point. It's not really proper to be screwing around so early in the day. Yes. I did indeed find it inappropriate, but his emphasis on the qualifier worried me. Kota's been really dangerous, though. We can't exactly go have our fun at night like normal people. True. So to hell with how appropriate it is. A man's gotta live! 
We're gonna party whenever we feel like it. He looks mad now. Fine. That didn't really seem right. Even so, on some level, his absurd logic made sense. After all, everyone needs to relax from time to time, especially if they have the worries of the Shinsengumi. And if they worked at night, then when else would they go but the afternoon? Yep, night people have an opposite schedule. I was still thinking on that when Toto walked in. Oh, Chizuru, are you coming too? Well, I still haven't been given permission to leave the house. I don't want Hijikata to get mad at me. I shook my head and gave a little shrug. Toto's face fell a little. So, you're going to Shimbara too then, Toto? Uh, well, yeah. Um, look, Chizuru, you don't have to call me Toto, okay? It just feels kind of cold, you know? Um, well, what should I call you then? Just call me Heisuke. Everyone else does. After all, we're going to be living together for quite a while. Is that really okay? I mean, I don't want to be rude. He nodded enthusiastically. Alright then, Heisuke. Right, there you go. So, what do you say we start over? Hello, Chizuru. It's nice to meet you. He gave me a short, friendly bow. Okay, it's a pleasure to meet you too, Heisuke. It wasn't anything important, I knew, but something about the exchange made me feel happy. Whether or not he'd intended to, Heisuke had cheered me up. But, you're still going to Shimbara then? He opened his mouth and closed it again, unsure of what to say. I'm not going there for the girls. I just wanted to hang out with the guys, you know? Oh. Sure you are. The rest of the men treated him like a little brother, so it was easy to forget, but Toto, uh, Heisuke, was an adult. At any rate, I'd heard he could hold his liquor well enough. As I looked at his smile, I simply couldn't bring myself to try and stop him. Well, maybe if you dressed up like a real woman, that'd be enough eye candy to keep us out of trouble. <laughs> Would that keep you guys here if I dressed as a woman? Wh what yeah, hell yeah. You'd be real cute. When stuff settles down, you ought to start dressing like a girl again. Y you guys, that's, that's, this is just so sudden. And when are things going to settle down? It could be years. I could feel my face turning bright red. For some reason, it seemed embarrassing for them to suddenly start treating me like a girl, as if they'd only just remembered. Not sure what else to do, I gave them an awkward nod, and they beamed back at me. When I... Get the chance someday. All right. Heisuke almost literally jumped for joy. That's a promise, Shizuru. You better not forget it. Okay. I hardly needed them to tell me to dress like a woman again. Once my life had calmed down a bit, I'd only promised to do something I would certainly have done anyway. So why did I feel so embarrassed? Look, Shizuru. You've got to see our side here. We bust our ass every day to keep Kyoto safe. That's not a very convincing excuse. <laughs> because they work so hard, I should dress like a girl for them. Even as I said it, though, I knew he was right. It was perfectly normal for boys to have their fun in Shimbara. Besides, who was I to try to stop them from going in the first place? I certainly didn't have any authority. Going to the pleasure quarters in broad daylight still seemed questionable to me, but if their superiors didn't mind... I was a guest of the Shinsengumi, and it would hardly prove polite for me to try and tell them what to do. But even so, they had gone out of their way to talk to me until I felt better about the situation. That alone told me that they were good men, with nothing to hide. Well, maybe not nothing to hide, but they were good men. All right. A part of me was jealous of them. I had no interest in going to Shimbara, of course, but I had no choice in the matter. I was, I was confined to the compound. With their freedom, I could have gone to search for my father, but as it was, I could do nothing. I'll bring you back something. What sort of food do you like? Did he really think the city had nothing to offer for me but food? Well, even if he did, I couldn't say I didn't want a little something from outside. Alright then, I'd like some tangerines. Maybe we can eat them together tomorrow morning? I mean, tomorrow afternoon? Harada gave a single short laugh and nodded. As soon as Hijikata gives you permission to go out, we'll take you wherever you want to go. He certainly sounded as though he meant it, at least. 
Well, thank you. But Heisuke, you don't need to worry, all right? Even if you can't take me now, the intent is what matters. You cheered me up. He frowned quickly, but it was gone in a moment and he gave me a simple nod. Then, just as they were about to finally leave. Who's coming? Alright, somebody's walking an awfully long time. Uh, just where do you think you're going? We all turned as one to see Inoue walking toward us. Damn it. Just had to begin, huh? His voice was only loud enough for us to hear. Perhaps they did feel guilty for going to Shimbara, I realized. I couldn't help but feel sorry for them. Um, well, I'm not going anywhere, but uh... I had no idea what else to say. I was just seeing them off. Um, well, you know again, R right? We're going to train. Yeah, that's it. Heisuke quickly warmed to his excuse, as did Nagakura. Y yeah, exactly. Like Heisuke said, I mean, it's such a nice day. The sun's out, the breeze is warm. <sighs> to me, at least, the day felt rather cold. But perhaps Nagakura wasn't as sensitive to such things. I decided to keep my mouth shut. Inoue raised an eyebrow. He is not buying that excuse. My goodness, you're all so diligent. We train together so rarely these days. Might I join you? <laughs> he looked honestly happy, pleased with the decision of his fellows. <laughs> Those faces. Oh, so much for your trip. I... I didn't know what to say. Harada, Heisuke, and Nagakura all looked as though they just learned of a beloved pet's death. <laughs> um, I'm sorry? What am I sorry for? I didn't do anything. Uh, maybe because I delayed them too long. To not somehow acknowledge what had just happened seemed wrong somehow. I had to say something. It was at that very moment that Heisuke spoke up. Oh man, I'm sorry. I really wanted to go train with you guys, but I just remembered. I already had plans for today. Plans? See, I already promised Chizuru that I'd give her a tour of our headquarters, right? Uh, it was news to me. Still, when he looked at me with eyes like those of a sad puppy, I had no choice but to go along. Y yes that's right, yes! His eyes sparkled, and he grabbed a hold of my hand and began to walk off. Heisuke had cheered me up a little after all. Perhaps this way, I'd be able to pay him back for that. Hold on there, Heisuke. Do you really think you can... Before I could even finish, Harada interrupted, a mischievous grin on his face. I'd better come too, Chizuru. And make sure none of these guys give you any trouble. Uh, well, okay, but... Oh, I see, I see. Well then, Harada does have a point. I'll leave her in your care then. Alright, Shimpachi, shall we go? <laughs> Shimpachi's the only one stuck training, poor guy. <laughs> oh, I expected this from Heisuke, but you, Sano, I thought you were better than that. His knuckles had gone white, and he positively shook with anger. Uh, come on, isn't the game pretty much given up here now in front of Inoue saying all that stuff? Time to go. What? <laughs> We're gonna make a mad dash for it? Shin's got a bit of a short temper. Heisuke grabbed my hand, and Harara pushed me from behind, and soon we were moving away from the entrance at a rapid cl clip? A rapid clip, okay. Never heard of that before. I could still hear Nagakuro yelling, but the two men with me had begun to laugh, their eyes sparkling with mirth. Well, hopefully he doesn't hold on to that long. It was infectious, and I quickly found myself laughing along with them. Nagakura, on the other hand, had little cause for levity. I heard later that he and Inoue spent the rest of the day training, just the two of them. Nagakura's mouth was always in motion, and plenty that came out of it was none too nice, but underneath all that was a good man. I watched shadows drift up my wall as the orange light of the sun painted my room the color of autumn leaves. How long am I going to do this? Solitude was proving detrimental to any sort of continued optimism. All my thoughts eventually turned dark and hopeless. 
It was depressing, but most of all it was frustrating. How could I let myself be discouraged so easily? Fairly easily, actually. I'd been swept up in a frightening world I didn't understand and couldn't possibly control. I can't possibly figure out what's happening to Father if I'm stuck here. Alright, and there we're going to take a break because I've been recording for a while. And I'm going to have to actually cut that because I made way too many mistakes. Oh, looks like the, um... Uh, looks like this game isn't going to be quite as easy to do amateur readings of. So there's going to be a mediocre amount of cutting for these. Darn it, they're not, it's not going to be as fast as I had hoped. Hopefully the other game will be faster. I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm not feeling well today that I'm having more trouble. Hopefully that's it. I just really stumbled over a lot of things here, so... Ah, wish me luck in the future. Hope to see you in my future videos, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.